Absolutely. I love this question. So shortly before COVID hit in January of 2020, I went on a bio tour with a couple of my colleagues and we went and we flew around to essentially all of the biotech hubs in the US at least. And we met with students there, um, grad students, postdocs, medical students, all sorts of folks from, from the life sciences field who were interested in starting a company. And they were at all kinds of different stages. Some of them already had like really mature research that they were planning to spin out and just wanted like tactical advice on how to do it. Other people were super early. They just thought they might want to start a life science company someday. And they were trying to figure out if it was a good fit for them. And I absolutely loved that trip because I got to learn really firsthand how founders and future founders were thinking about it. And um, here's some advice based on those conversations. The first thing is there's a lot of really tactical steps involved in actually spinning research out of a university and starting a company. You have to figure out how to allocate equity with your team. You have to figure out who's gonna leave the university, who's gonna stay, who's gonna be a scientific founder. You have to figure out how you're gonna get the initial funding. You have to figure out how you're gonna license the IP. You have to figure out how you're gonna do lab space, if you're gonna continue to use lab space at the university. And if so, how that affects the IP situation. There's all these like tactical questions. We got a lot of those. Um, and so I actually wrote a blog post <laughs> in which I walked through like all of those in great detail. Um, so if you're at that stage and you have those tactical questions, Google how to spin your scientific research out into a startup and you'll see my essay, it'll be at the top of a Google search results and goes into a lot of tactical advice on those. At a high level though, I wanna give like the thing that I, I saw as like the biggest mistake and the most important single piece of advice, which is that Founders in the life sciences are much too cautious about spinning research out. They are way too reluctant to do it. So if you have some research and you're thinking about spinning it out, you probably should. <laughs> Based on my experience, you are probably being too cautious about deciding if you should do it. And um, I'll give sort of a, a story to, to talk about why I think this is. A thing that we love doing at YC is going around to schools and talking to students who are interested in starting companies. So we've been doing it for years, since the very beginning of YC in 2005. And so I've done this now for folks who are in the life sciences, and I've done it for the computer science folks who are mostly starting software companies. And it is amazing when I go to MIT and I talk to the computer science undergrads who are like working on some website, versus I walk across campus <laughs> and I go to the folks who are getting PhDs in biology who are thinking about starting companies because it's like entering two different universes. When I talk to the biology folks about starting companies, I talk to these, these incredible scientists who've been doing this research for years and they've sunk years and you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of NIH, of NIH funding into this research. And it's really far along and it's potentially world changing. It could save people's lives. It's like really amazing stuff. And I'm like, you should spin this out and start a company. And then they give me a list of like 17 reasons why they can't. <laughs> and I like end up like trying to convince them to do it. Versus when I go and I talk to the undergrads who are doing the, the undergrads and, and the grad students who are studying computer science, they're like, yeah, we dropped out of MIT a year ago to work on this app. And I'm like, so what does your app do? And they're like, well, it, uh, uh, it counts your score when you're playing ping pong. And I'm just like sitting there, I'm like, really? You like dropped out of your MIT PhD program to spend a year working on this app that like counts your score when you're playing ping pong or something like that? It's like, it's amazing how much more willing f folks are to drop out and start software companies versus to start hard tech and biotech and life science companies. And um, as a result of this, I think there's really a, a huge gap where there are a ton of really promising companies in the life sciences that just aren't being started because the would-be founders behind them just aren't ready to take the plunge and actually do it yet. And one way that we see this is in the YC 
metrics of our acceptance rates for different kinds of applications. So um, when you apply to YC, you tell us what kind of company you're doing. Are you building a website? Are you building a biotech company? And if, if you look at our acceptance rates, our acceptance rates for biotech companies are 10 times our acceptance rates for companies who are building websites and apps, 10 times. The first time I saw that number, I figured it had to be some sort of like mistake or something in the way we were calculating it, but it's actually true. It's actually 10 times. And the reason is people in biotech are so reluctant to actually start a biotech company that anyone who does is probably starting something that's really good. So that is my most important advice for people who are thinking about starting a biotech company. Do it. <laughs>